Let's start. <coughs> okay, uh, today there will be uh, two things that I would like to start first. First, uh, our topic today. Uh, <clears throat> this is a new topic. Uh, the first thing I thought is something about the first time. The topic being introduced as a new transaction and you capture the transaction information using a journal you post the journals into the respective ledgers uh, ledgers and then you create uh, <coughs> at the end of accounting period you create financial report that's it okay we will have that information will have the data stored on our system and then there are some regulations that think that for certain data, it should be stored for a certain period of time. For example, for taxation purposes, all transaction documents and information should be stored by any companies and also by any individuals for at least 10 years. So, for example, uh, last month, all individuals taxpayer submitted their annual tax report to the government and all the supporting documents should be kept by that individual for uh, at least 10 years so until the year 2032 whenever within that 10 years the government required us to produce certain uh, evidence or documentation we should be able to produce them. Otherwise, there will be a sanction. And that's also applied to any other countries with different uh, information and data, not only for taxation purposes, but also for legal purposes. For example, if you follow the Americans, uh, the, the US politics right now, uh, there was a problem with the phone recording. Uh, from the previous president, Donald Trump. Uh, the, the, the phone recording was missing about seven hours of recording. Similar problems happened with uh, President Nixon back in the 70s. Where president, uh, and then it's called as the Watergate scandal, where about 18 minutes of recording, of presidential recording was missing. And because of that, Nixon was uh, forced to resign from his presidency before uh, any criminal investigation can be conducted. Okay, so we have the data, okay, and some regulation require us to keep the data for certain time. But is that it? That uh, the data is just being piled in some, you know, back office somewhere or in the warehouse in form of uh, filing cabinets full of files or any digital files kept somewhere hidden? Apparently not. But that's what's become the trend lately, which is 
analyzing our historical data. Try to find what's in it. What insight can be seen. And it's for a lot of business decision. Well, not all. That was good, but for example, next semester when Bu Pratiwi will uh, create class offering, she will be looking at the past data. Yeah. Uh, she will looking at uh, for the last year how many classes for certain subject need to be offered, uh, and she also look at the this semester data how many. People will, or how many students will fail their classes. So that's what actually happened. Okay. We try to analyze all the data that we had and try partly to understand what happened, partly try to predict what's in the future, and partly to tell us what we need to do. Okay. I'll explain to you. Okay. Uh, I believe you already heard or seen or even understand term big data. Big data means data that uh, has a big characteristic. So, in the past, the conventional uh, we put only Currently in the middle of festive season, especially for food and beverage in Indonesia, festive, uh, festive season could account up to 40% of total annual sales. So for this whole month and also subsequent uh, days after uh, Ramadan, that could make up 40% of the total sales for 2022. So it's a huge. Only in one month, you can get 40% of the total uh, revenue from one year. Okay, so it's a big deal for a company. The problem would be what product should be provided, at what price, and where should we sell? Oh, and for the midterm exam, I know that the requirement requires you to attend the exam in class, but I have decided it would be take-home exam. Okay, I'll explain to you uh, later at the end of our class. Anyway, so there are a lot of uh, business decisions that could not be made only depending on transaction data. So in the past, companies will hire or they will have a marketing research firm, they will hire marketing research firm, or they will have marketing research employee, okay, staff that specializes. They'll try to find out what the customer wants. What's the customer needs? Uh, why this product is more like by customer? Why you can do it for two hours of the day? Now, what is the current digitalization of business? Yeah, okay. Not only the 
Also recorded. Uh, when did you open the application? From where? Geographically. Uh, which gadget did you use to open it? Type of gadget? Wrapping system, uh, how much storage in it? And it, that's very easy. You know, uh, there are a lot of tools that can be used just to know what the device used by the customer to access I did that in the past and it's, it's just like a few line of codes that's it so and then when you open that application you start browsing for products with many categories many types you find you know any discount or promos for certain type of product all those activities are being recorded up to or leading to the final sales. So, for example, I'll, I'll use Tokopedia as example because uh, one of the founder was uh, our alumni. So, <coughs> well, informatics alumni anyway. So, <coughs> Tokopedia could find out what started from a user browsing for shoes end up with that particular user buying rice or snacks and what kind of promo is most effective for encouraging users to buy is it free shipping is it a discount for certain products or what is free shipping better than uh, reducing the price of certain products And it's always uh, a minute sounds when you know most inappropriate time. Anyway, so those kind of information, those kind of data being gathered and being analyzed. So next time Tokopedia want to make you purchase lousy t-shirts, they could. Believe it or not, those companies able to manipulate our emotion and our rational thinking to become rational and that has been uh, illegally or unethically being researched by this so there's no power to unethical research so this is how this will be the so a particular this will be this book will try to only Also, 
those uh, company can manipulate our um, action. That probably to some extent with all will also be implemented in marketplace. That's why there are certain uh, promotion at certain time. Okay. Uh, there are certain uh, program certain time. There will be a reward for you if you make uh, this many purchases for certain period of time. That a decision was not made just willy nilly. It, it has something uh, based on the observation of your behavior. So, all those data being gathered and being analyzed. So, that's basically what data analytics is. So, not only looking at transaction data, but also interaction data. How many times you looking at certain product until you decided to purchase that product. How long it takes for you to put a product into your, uh, <coughs> what do you call it? Uh, yeah, yeah. The trolley or whatever it's called. The shopping cart. How many days or weeks that particular product stay in your shopping cart untouched? And then, what happened with that? Did you erase that from your shopping cart, or did you finally pay for that particular product? Those marketplace understand that they have those information. Why? Because they observe you from the moment you open, you, from the moment you download it and install that application, they will follow you. So they can understand like uh, in, in, in Babarsari area, for example, how many people will <coughs> buy diapers? Not that many, I think. Okay, but uh, there will be a lot of people buying <coughs> snacks. Okay, so that's... Uh, now, with uh, big data, it's actually really, really big. Uh, how much storage you have in your personal computer? One terabyte, two terabyte, less than that. Big data can have, it on average, up to 1,000 terabyte per day. So it's huge in volume. <clears throat> Gigantic. And it's not only textual, like transaction, but also any other data. Okay. Uh, and it also has velocity, uh, the pace or the speed that those data being created. Facebook used to have new servers just to handle those data, up to 1,000 new servers per day. So you can imagine uh, the computing power is to have. Variety, different, uh, different form of data can be taken. And veracity refers to the quality of trustworthiness of data. Uh, a lot of people. So basically, because of people see machine as harmless, not like thing, they tend to be for us. So if you use Google, uh, let's 
say again, you have symptoms of uh, illness. You'll be more truthful to Google compared to if you get yourself better. Uh, For example, <coughs> I have this condition that is called the. Uh, so basically, my body could not. Uh, met my metabolism could not handle fat that well, so uh, I'll have this in my blood called the triglycerides level higher than normal, and that happens even if I eat properly and exercise regularly. I used to walk at least one hour a day every week. Five days a week, so five hours walking. That's just from uh, going to the university and back. Okay. Not to mention, if I have to go, uh, I have to go to the library, I have to go somewhere, I walk. With that, and, and, and I eat properly, you know, balance, diet, things like that. And even with that, I always have higher than usual triglyceride so, trick level. So when I start to well, it started a few years ago when I reached 40. I had my annual general checkup, and my doctor would ask me, "How's your diet?" And I said, "Oh, great! I had a lot of vegetable, but in, yeah, not that simple." Uh, my doctor asked me to. Replace white rice with red or black rice, which is higher in fiber. I don't have problem with that. My family have problem with that because it tastes awful. It doesn't really like. Really, it's, it's just like it, eating cardboard. So we switch to white rice. Again. So, but when my doctor asks, "Are you eating enough fiber?" Oh yes, I eat a lot of fiber. And then she look at the lab result. So why did you still have this? At this time, I don't know. You the doctor tell me. But you know, when when I ask Google about it, I'll, I'll, I'll be truthful. Okay. So that's veracity. It means most of the time you will be more honest to machine compared to other human beings. Okay. Now, as you may remember from the society. How we share the business in project okay. That's one thing that machine actually good part the business analytics side. So we need uh, and this is what uh, what I agree with accounting. Accounting student should be able to develop analytic mindset. So when you look at transaction numbers, it's not only oh this transaction will go to this side of journal, this transaction will go to that journal, and then that journal will go into this general ledger. Not only that, but what does it mean for the company? What does it mean that our sales are better than last year's? What does it mean when uh, our profit down from last year? For example, is it possible to have uh, profit increase compared to last year, even with decrease in sales? Is it possible to have higher profit with uh, lower sales? Possible? Yes, it is. I see a lot of company did that, especially in the last two years. So what happened was they reduced cost, firing a lot of uh, un, you know, un, uh, what do you call it, unessential workers. They also sell unproductive assets. They have cars that may never be used, sold them. They have machine that has been stay quiet in the corner, sell them. They have land that never been used, sell them. So by 
selling aset, reducing cost, even with increasing sales, you can still have higher profit because you have more income. But that's unhealthy and unsustainable because your income or your revenue came from non-operational activities, non-sales activities, which is, uh, that's fine for a year, but you can't sell your uh, machine every year. Okay. <clears throat> so that's, that's what this is about. Okay. If you look at numbers now, you need to start asking questions. What does this number mean? What's the impact? to the companies, what decision should be made regarding these numbers. So, make decision based on available data, not the other way around. Okay. So, this is the, uh, the, the asking the right question. Okay. So, it should be specific. We are not magician here. We will not uh, create a miracle. Okay. Although it might be seems like miracles. <clears throat> okay. Uh, relevant, and this is where your accounting knowledge will play into uh, importance. It means if you would give a data about site. timely you need to understand when the analysis and the result should be given there is no use for a good analysis that uh, reported too late <clears throat> the process to capture the data from the system and then using the data for analytics is called the ETL process, extract, transform, and load. Let's start with extract. There are many systems with different format and different form and different type of data. How to get the data? That's another challenge. Uh, for example, if you see the factors that they want to have, uh, 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 how to get the data from those Luckily, now the 
there is a lot of uh, application being used by companies all over the world as a mechanism to provide the data in certain format. And then it can be grabbed by analytic software to be used. However, that's only the first challenge. The second challenge is actually cleaning the data. Transaction system are known for having dirty data. Dirty data means incomplete data, the wrong data, wrong for uh, wrong format. For example, uh, you know that the American use one day years format, while Indonesian use day months and years format. There are some uh, company or there are some data that use uh, AMPM for time. Okay, so that's different. So that's we need to clear the data. Of that before. Clear the data. Right. And has it has to be done automatically. I actually uh, write a book about this <clears throat> in the middle of the process of writing. And I also have a demonstration how to clean up the data. How to delete it on my laptop and I talk about it. We are not allowed to use a whole laptop. But it has a lot of different uh, tools there. <coughs> anyway, so it's we can use automatic process to clean the data. So, dirty data should not be analyzed because if it's you analyze dirty data, you will have wrong information. And if you make decision with uh, inaccurate or wrong information, your decision will be wrong also. For example, was named as a strong candidate for presidency. Unfortunately, the incident that he delivered false information to United Nations tarnished his reputation. And that's one thing that he uh, 
regret until his death last year. So before Barack Obama, Colin Powell was a strong candidate for presidency. I think he's even stronger than Obama because he was a four-star general. Uh, he fought in Iraq. Okay, so, okay. <clears throat> and then transforming data. Okay. Uh, because those data have different structure, it has to be uh, changed in order to be able to be analyzed. Uh, this is beyond the scope of this subject. So I'll just introduce this to you. And then load the data into uh, analytic system. So what kind of analytic techniques that can be used? First, descriptive analytics, it means to show what actually happened. Like this class, how many male and how many students? How many male and how many pass? That's descriptive. Just to describe what's in it. Then I have to analytics. This is good of descriptive analytics to answer the question why did this happen? If you look at uh, various investigations toward uh, airline accidents, just actually try to find out what actually happened. Why is this plane falling down from sky? And that's usually a combination of several different factors altogether. Contrary to uh, the news, the cause of any airline accident usually more than one. It's combination. Probably bad uh, maintenance, bad design of the plane itself, and incompetent pilots. But those together uh, can create a lot of it. Have you seen the movie? Uh, I can't the book, but this is the, the movie that uh, star Tom Hanks. That, uh, he become a, uh, so he, he portrayed a pilot that had accidents, uh, both the engines being hit by birds, and he succeeded in landing that plane into Hudson River. Hudson River in the that's the, the the boundary between New York and New Jersey. Have you seen this? I think that the film called Sun. So that's based on a uh, true event. Captain Sullenberger actually uh, able to land the plane without losing any passengers. And yet the plane itself, the, the boat engine being destroyed by birds. It means the plane itself, although it's completely without power, the pilot, if they really competent, can land the plane safely. So, like I said, it's always okay. And then predictive analytics, what might happen in the future? So, my friend, uh, my friend, my friend, uh, my Uh, so 
his fighting was buying a slab. Why? Because the old layer of the rectangle plate to proper, it will have function to the first one. And at least four times in one time. Two tires are the one in the first one. And you know how much it costs to patch up the tire for us. That's only for one tire. And then we also present that the new rubber, because it's not only to do it with the tire, it will only just be fixed with two men in the end. It's not actually stick to the tire. So it did to have to lay on cover. And because of that, of that to do now, yeah, it will be more. Lastly, the tire uh rarely do what everything, especially with high speed. So the uh, risk of uh, involving the accident because of pilot were uh, too significant. So after that presentation, the company decided now if the tire is because we will replace it with some uh, new tires because it's well initial cost will be higher than just you know fix a new rubber, but in the long term it's much more efficient. What if we change this into this? What if we produce this? What if we change the, the price? <coughs> and then there is prescriptive analytics. This to recommend an action. For example, what my friend did, recommending buying new tire. And then interpreting the result. This is the part where we as humans has a lot of advantage compared to machine. Okay. And this is actually where your knowledge of accounting and business become handy. Now, with analytics, there is a uh, <coughs> Called correlation. Correlation means two things happen at the same time. So if A happens, B also. But correlation is not causation. Swapping and one person. The correlation between smoking and one person are quite high. Smoking, I'll say, uh, I'll say, 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 I'
happen at the same time doesn't necessarily mean one thing causing the others. And you need to be very careful with statistical tools. If you enter the numbers and you run the statistical test, it will give you answer. For example, this is this this is the example that so ridiculous that I think uh, my students usually can understand. Okay. On one side, you can enter by one return. And the other side, you can enter the number of X produced for a chicken or generation. Right, guys? Right. It might give you positive correlation where suddenly it increases uh, the number of X produced by chicken or generation.
problem was that I think five years in one of the best way to go to work like that. If you uh, try to, for example, try to find out the frequency of vaccine, you know that there are a lot of articles that are well respected of the patient for my day and all the world. Then there are lots of problems. Lots of problems. Some doctors may do this. Try to emulate Try to Now living uh, a good life, you know, having a lot of money, dating supermodel, things like that. So yeah, life life is not fair. Yeah. Anyway, and then telling or uh, sharing the result. This is this also another uh, field where computer could not replace us. Conveying. in business communication courses and also language courses. Okay. Now, another way of communicating uh, the information is through visualization. Okay. You try to uh, represent the data in form of visual. I'll, I'll give you another example later. Okay. So, yeah. Train. So, this is the, the way to uh, analyze data. Sometimes you just aggregate the data like this one. It's enough to create an information that can be used. Okay. But sometimes you need to do extra work like, you know, uh, pre or something like that. I'll skip this because it's too much to cover in just one uh, lecture. Don't worry. The basic for data analytics will be given to you with, in different subjects. For example, uh, in, in domain knowledge, you, are, you will learn this through all the accounting subjects. Uh, statistic will be given to you. Communication will be given to you. So. Don't worry, okay. it will be there. So there is a basic statistical test, things like that. Now visualization. See, there are different types of visualization and each type will be 
useful for comparing different types. For, for example, if you want to compare something, use for chart. If you want to show proportion, use pie chart. If you want to show trend, use line chart. Now, as in any other uh, discipline, this is just a tool. It can be used for good or evil. Let me give you another uh, this example. <laughs> this is a deliberate effort with visualization to give you or to uh, try to force you to misinterpret the information being given. For example, the middle one is the proper one. Comparison between 4.0 and 3.0 really, really small, right? So this little chart is too small. It shows us real. But comparison to this, 4.0 and 3.0, that's the same thing. Although, in fact, the middle one is different. It doesn't really get different. It, there is a difference, but in significance. Hey, you just use a part of visualization to illustrate your intention. For example, let's just say that this is uh, the daily price of the So, this is the stock price. Only from this. See? This is well, no doubt that uh, it's uh, on the downward trend. But if you follow the whole chart, it will show it's actually on the upward trend. So this part of information, if you just show this part of it, it will mislead the audience into. Interpreting the picture different from reality. And that's unfortunately what the media currently did. A lot of them. Okay, so that's it for uh, the topics. Any questions? Alan, do you have any question at home? No, sir. Okay, so this is the uh, midterm exam. We were we conducting a little bit of analysis, but I think it's not in So, how do you? You are the most important effort. Uh, this will be group effort. So it's a group assignment, uh, if you like. However, each group member will have their individual work. So there will be four people. Each group member should pick. Single answer at the end. So we will have one answer from 
its member and return as a So what's the question? The tables will show the performance of salesperson. So I'm asking you to show me or to let me know who in your opinion based on these tables the best salesperson. Ah, uh, by the way, this is the data is from actual performance monitoring of salesperson. So this is actual data, genuine data from a genuine company. It's a multinational company, one of the biggest in the world. Okay. Uh, it's sell drink. Sells well, uh, drink in bottles. So it could be water, tea, syrups, soft drink, juice, and even alcoholic drink. So you know, take your pick. Okay, it's it's irrelevant to this, but they, their 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 product is drinks. Uh, anyway. So, each of member take two different tables, and then from each different table, uh, from from those two, determine who's the best and also the worst. So from both tables, each member will determine who's the best and the worst. Okay. Uh, there is the code. Uh, I'm sorry, it's in in Bahasa, but that's that's the, the real data. Uh, but you, you you can understand. So the salesperson will have the code as their identity. Uh, the JL, the U, the Z, refer to the actual code, but I remove the name. Now, uh, and don't worry, this has been recorded, so you can replay the recording later. So, the first level is GPS match. Salesperson doesn't actually uh, record their attendance. They could not go to the office because they don't have office uh, officially, and you know record their attendance either with you know signing or using fingerprints or whatever. Why? Because their working hours are different from administrative uh, employee. Their customer could be open as early as five o'clock, or they they only can meet the customer as late as ten o'clock in the night. So their operation hours was not limited. So the company. Uh, do not have, does not have standards record for salesperson. So for replacing that, they need for so every morning in their handset, in their mobile phone, there will be list of customer contact that need to be visited of that particular day. So for example, uh, nine three have one hundred sixty six. Uh, sorry, 169 uh, customers that need to be visited in total. While the others, they came for only 92 by different because they are in different geographical locations. So, for example, if IB is in Babasari here, there are a lot of uh, many markets, uh, cafe, things like that. that in one go, but a more probably somewhere in Manora fields that you know uh, very sparsely populated, not as dense as Papar Sari. So those numbers of outlets came from the head office in Jakarta. So they decided 
92 of A4 are equal A4 to 169 of 90. Okay. Now, what they need to do after they receive their daily uh, assignment, they go to the outlet and they scan the QR code of that outlet. Just like what you did with uh, your attendance. Now, previously, there is nothing to it. They assume that the uh, uh, salesperson will uh, work with full of dedication, you know, uh, honesty, and so on and so forth. But you know that the real world doesn't work that way. Some of them actually take the pictures of the QR code. And instead of visiting the customer and scan the actual QR code, they just display the QR code in their mobile phone and using the, the tools that provided by the company to scan that code. While you know having breakfast at home or having coffee somewhere. So that's why the company is starting to use GPS data. So they hire third party to map the GPS data. So for this particular customer, what are the GPS coordinates for them? The longitude and uh, latitude, uh, longitude and latitude. They call it the long lap. Okay. And then when the salesperson visited and scanned that particular uh, outlet barcodes or QR code, it will be also recorded with the GPS. That's why it's called GPS match. Whether or not when they scan, the QR code is matched with the actual GPS location. Okay. And from time to time, it's very hard to achieve 100% because you know GPS are dynamic. Sometimes the, the weather prevent accurate GPS reading, things like that. Okay. That's fine. You know. Doesn't have to be 100%. And they also calculate the visit, the duration of visits. There is some standard in it. I I can I can't really get the number of the step, but you know, uh, if they just scan first outlet at 8 a.m. and then at 05 they already scan the third outlet, then the duration will be very short, and that's just impossible. Even if you visit the same outlet in over site, why? Because you need to have a conversation with the owner. That salesperson need to sell something, and selling something couldn't be achieved just by visiting an outlet for less than five minutes. Okay, so that's the first. The second is uh, the visit and order. So, like I said, they have to target. To visit this many online. In this case, all of them is this. Uh, example, all of them can visit. It's not necessarily uh, happen all the time. Sometimes they do not understand why they don't. And the new actor, even, even if they can still visit and scan, even though it's closed. That will go to the 
visit effectivity. Now, filling the empty columns, I don't think that's a problem for you. Okay. Just find the right formula and copy paste that formula to the whole table. That's it. Okay. However, again, for each of you, I need you to give me the name, oh sorry, the code for the best salesperson, the worst salesperson, based on the tables and the reason why. Okay, let me go to, now, this is, uh, I can get the sales achievement up to 15 of March. I couldn't get the, the latest, you know, the whole, for the whole of month of March. Uh, for some reason, but you know, it's, it's not really relevant. So this is their target, their March target, and this is their achievement. And this is the difference between target and the actual achievement. So how many percentage of their achievement? Okay. Again, determine based on this table, who is the best and the worst salesperson and why? Okay. And lastly, the productivity of our company. The company is calculated because sending the sales person to our uh, actually lost the numbers. They have to take the sales person itself for scanning and also for quarterly because they don't. Sixty 
remind you, don't focus on the numbers only. For example, I give you this. 100% match, for example. It doesn't really mean anything. It means that he scan or the salesperson scan the QR code on the right place. That's it. Just like I will never give any students extra credit if they attend or if they have a hundred percent attendance. Attendance is condition, is a requirement, not an achievement. So based on this, if the salesperson achieve 100 percent, doesn't necessarily mean he or she a candidate for the best. We need to look at another numbers. And then after each of you finish to analyze, good, uh, each of you analyze uh, two tables, come as a group, discuss, and decide it as a group who are the worst and the best salesperson. And obviously why. So each of you, based on each table, will have best and worst for each table. And as a group, you'll have best and worst. Any question? I'll give you the Excel, the full file, 24 hours before the exam start. But from my explanation here, I hope you can have an idea how you would approach the problem. Any question? Like I said, the analysis things in this uh, exam will not be that difficult. You can do it manually if you like. Okay. But with Excel or any other spreadsheet, it's just yeah, very easy. But that's not the point. My emphasis would be on Interpretation and presentation. No maximum. Okay. As long as you can upload it to Kuliah site. I don't know. Uh, I think they have some kind of limit on the size of files, but I don't know how much. Uh, try to stay within that. But in case of uh, how many pages, you can submit 100 pages if you like. Any more questions? It's up to you, actually. Uh, but like I said, I'll emphasize on interpretation and presentation. You may utilize anything. This. I mean, uh, you see, I give you uh, 
example of visualization. If you want to give visualization, go ahead. I'm not saying that if you do submitting a visualization, it will give you better mark. No, it's still uh, uh, I still have to look at the relevancy of that uh, visualization. If you, you if you put chart or uh, diagram in that, that's good, but not necessarily will be better. I have to look at the whole report as a whole. And that's and these four tables are actually being used for evaluating salesperson. Deciding whether or not this particular salesperson will receive incentive or whether or not this particular uh, salesperson will be put into improvement program. Improvement program means that salesperson will be under the watchful eye of management and HR department. It means if things not getting better, uh, they better find any other job. And that's based on these numbers. So, and this is real numbers, I promise you. I, I can't real feel the name of the companies, unfortunately. But this is based on real data. And I know for a fact that they use this. Any other question? Like I said, uh, the hardest part would be interpreting and presenting. Alan, you have a question? No, sir. Hey, if there's no uh, question, I think that's it for today. Good luck with your exams. Hopefully, uh, we can get back to whatever normal is after the midterm exam. Hopefully, there will be no increase in COVID cases. And sometimes in the near future, we can take off the mask. But in the meantime, uh, have a good exam. Hopefully, you get great result and see you after the midterm exam. Oh,